We are going to talk about probability and statistics, the introduction to statistics. So we are going to start with 1.1, an overview of statistics. So you can go through each one of these vocabulary words. I think it's important to highlight them. Statistics deals a lot with vocabulary. Um, you've got to understand what you're looking for. So we are going to look through this. So we just have data. That comes from observations, counts, measurements, responses. Statistics is a science of planning studies and experiments, obtaining data, organizing, summaries, summarizing, presenting, analyzing, and interpreting the data and drawing conclusions. We have two different types of ways of collecting data. We can collect the data of the whole population. So we would see that population is all, all of something. So um, anytime you see that word all, know that you're dealing with population measures. Sample is a sub collection. It's a part of the population. So from these examples, we are going to determine some other samples. So listed are three populations which data can be obtained. One potential subset from which a sample data would be obtained is listed. List two other samples from which data could be obtained. So we're going to say our population is high school students. So out of the high school students, we can take samples. So let's say members of the key club, a certain kind of club. So population is all high school students. And from that, we are going to take a sample. So let's say student athletes. We could also include dual credit students. Etc. Nationwide voters. So this would be all the voters. So from all the voters, we can create sample sets. So voters between the ages of 35 and 44. We could say Texas voters. Voters who voted, who actually voted in the last presidential election. We could also say male voters, female voters. I should put voters. There we go. Professional athletes. So we could look at WNBA rookies. Another sample would be NFL players. Those who have participated in the Olympics, so Olympians. Oh, forgot an M there. Olympians. And so many other, other ways to create samples. Parameter. So we are going to be finding a lot of information from our population and from our statistic. So a population comes from our parameter, sorry, comes from the population. So a numerical measurement describing some characteristics of a population. So parameter population. Statistic comes from the sample. So we can say the sample statistic mean is the population parameter mean is. Remember mean is the average. We'll be learning more about that. So ways to remember P goes with P, S goes with S. So the key word here, whether to know if it's a parameter or a sample, is you're looking for all. And for statistic, you'll be looking for sample. Determine whether the numerical value describes a population parameter or a sample statistic. The average salary for a MLB baseball player is $2,645,000. 
$645,442. So the average salary. So it doesn't say a sample of the baseball players. It just tells us the average salary. So that implies that we're dealing with all. Because how do you find average? You're going to add up and divide by how many you have. So if it's all, then we are talking about a parameter. In a random check of a sample of Pennsylvania restaurants, 29 out of the 65 surveyed have been cited with a violation last year. So we have that word sample in there. Then that means this is a statistic. 29 out of the 65. It's saying Pennsylvania restaurants. There's no way there's only 65. Pennsylvania restaurants. And it also tells us right here, this is a sample of the restaurants. So the population would be Pennsylvania restaurants. But what we have here, this 29 of 65, is a sample of them. The next one, a survey showed that of all 311 males at a local school district, 126 are involved in an interscholastic sport. What's the key word? All. So they took all of the males and they asked, are you part of a sport or are you not? Or maybe they looked at the records, the school records. So since they talked about all, this is a parameter. Remember our parameter is a numerical measurement describing some characteristic of a population. Next one, descriptive statistics, inferential statistics. So descriptive is just summarizing or describing the data. Inferential is you're making inferences, generalizations about the population. So inferential, you're going to actually draw a conclusion or draw conclusions. Descriptive is just describing. This is purely facts. Drawing conclusion is using the facts to say, make some kind of statement about those facts. Example, in a recent study, it was found that 86% of high school freshmen and sophomores sleep at least seven hours per night and that 61% of high school juniors and seniors sleep at least seven hours per night. Identify the, the descriptive branch of the statement. We're actually just going to underline. Underline. So it's the facts about the data. The fact is they found that 86% of high school freshmen and sophomores sleep at least seven hours per night, and 61% of high school juniors and se seniors sleep at least seven hours per night. That's, those are the facts that came from the data. What inferences can, could be drawn using inferential statistics? So if you look at the numbers and you compare them, I would say juniors and seniors sleep less than freshmen and sophomores. Or we could say the opposite. Let's call them underclassmen and upperclassmen. Underclassmen appear to sleep more than upperclassmen. And if you want to go further and draw more conclusions from this, you could say maybe upperclassmen have more homework so they don't sleep as much or they're involved in more activities.
Okay, that is it for this part of 1.1.